What is going on guys, it's Jake. We're back in for another YouTube video. You guys have been seeing me with new parts for the car in the last couple videos. That's pretty much what we've been basing the videos around. But today I wanted to do a little update video and show you guys some problems that I've found along the way. Building the car, blah, blah, blah. Just some little stuff that uh, it adds up. You know, it's just uh, stuff that not a lot of people show and I wanna keep you guys uh, in the loop. So we'll show you guys a bunch of problems I've been coming across and hopefully ways that you can solve them if you run into similar issues. So yeah, stay tuned and we'll get started. So looking at the car here now, you guys know I installed the 2015 SDI steering rack. And one thing that I had a problem with was I wanted to use a STI steering knuckle, which I did acquire one, which I will show you guys the difference right now. But you guys can see this is the Forrester one right here. This is the STI one. The only difference is the Forrester one has an extra damper in here. So I wanted to use the STI one just to get that stiff steering feel just like an STI would have. But as you guys can see on the bench here, this thing is a good bit shorter than the Forrester one. So it's about an inch shorter in total. And that creates a pretty big issue because the splines right here where this piece would go on the top and bottom it's not long enough to fill the gap so i think that the 15 sti rack has a shorter output shaft right here where this thing would connect so unfortunately i won't be able to use this i'm not really thinking i'm going to modify this thing to try to make it work it's such an essential part when it comes to steering the vehicle so i'm not going to take any chances and try to lengthen this or anything so i'm just going to end up basically selling this piece and reinstalling the Forester one, which is kind of unfortunate, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do to get the job done. So we'll get rid of that one, and uh, that's just one problem. Let's go on to the next. So staying kind of with the steering problems, I have the stock Forester steering lines right here for the power steering rack, and I go to the power steering pump up here on the front where the engine typically sits. But problem that I'm running into is I don't wanna use these old dingy looking lines when pretty much everything else in the engine bay is going to be almost brand new so we got to do something with these lines i haven't quite figured it out yet i do know that the male lines coming off of the rack itself are 16 by 1.5 and 14 by 1.5 thread so if we can get like an adapter from that to an then i might be able to do something like that and run new lines but for the feed line that is always under a lot of pressure i don't really trust the an line so i'll have to get a hydraulic one custom made but that's kind of one thing that's uh limiting us right now and i don't really want to put the engine in until i get them the line situation figured out because then it's going to be awful hard to get these with the engine sitting right here for now i'm just kind of brainstorming i know chase bays does make a kit but it hooks up to the actual rack that's under here and then it runs across underneath which it is clean but it's a lot more work than just using these lines and there's not really anything to gain from doing that so if i can just have an adapter right here then it'll all work out just fine and one thing i do plan to do is feed the lines up this way rather than over this way because there's not going to be anything sitting here so it just will be a lot cleaner if they come up right back here follow the bell housing right under the manifold up to the pump so i do plan to have the reservoir sitting here actually but i'm not quite sure what reservoir i'm using or any of that kind of stuff yet so that's another issue we're running into right now let's go on to the next thing another thing is we have the stock forester xt brake master cylinder right here that i painted black which i am really happy with but one of my good buddies uh, reminded me that the STI one has a bigger piston. This piston in this one is one inch and the piston in the STI one is one inch and one sixteenth. So it would create a little bit more firm pedal feel. So I did end up getting one of those. Shout out to the same person that hooked me up with the steering rack. He sent me one of those. It's not here yet. And um, when that gets here, I'll swap that out. So that's another thing we gotta do but I'm super happy with all these lines and how they're routed. So I'm gonna try to keep that just like how it is. Next thing, we have the speed sensor wiring right here for the six speed. Originally my car was an automatic for those of you guys just tuning in. And Andrew Tech did the speed sensor wiring and uh, whatever this plug is as well. And the wiring was just not, uh, not great at all. So basically this plug goes right onto here like this 
and water was sitting in this plug and had it completely corroded. It's a wonder it didn't just fail before I even took the car apart. But I got a new plug from iWire. I just haven't put it on yet. I was just fooling around with it to try to figure out how to get it on and get it on right. And you can see this plug actually has the wires pulling out of it too that they put in. And that's one wire that actually did pull out of it. So none of that's really uh, up to my standards. We're going to fix that before we get the engine back in. And that's just another thing. You guys can see how these little things add up. Uh, just takes a long time to figure these little things out, a lot longer than what you might think. That's real quick, update you guys on the engine. I've been working on it a little bit, so. You guys can see I painted the coolant crossover black, which I'm really happy with how that came out. I have been test fitting some TGVs on here, and I do have these 90 degree fittings on my AN for my valve covers. Now, this one and the same one on the other side, both go to the middle of the engine where this T is. As you guys can see, I installed the T. And the only kind of issue with this is the way the TGVs sit, it kind of makes it a sharp turn for this. So there's gonna have to be another 90 uh, AN fitting and then the line going across to here for both sides. And that's something I've been working on. I got these nice clamps. Uh, I'll put the kit up here on the screen but they basically are like a hose clamp they're not ever meant to come back off so they're really nice and they crimp the hose really well so that was originally for where the throttle body would be heated by the coolant for uh the winter time startups yeah we're kind of working our way with the engine i'm waiting on a whole bunch of lines and stuff to kind of get all this stuff routed and then also we're going to do the whole fuel system for the engine on the stand before we actually put it in the car. So my plan is to have a parallel setup, 8 AN fuel line coming in straight to the center, a Y in the center, parallel lines going out to each front of the fuel rail, then coming off the back of the fuel rail with a 90 degree AN fitting, back to the center to a T with parallel lines coming from each side, then the T going over to the regulator, then the regulator going through the ethanol sensor, back to the back with a return on the, with the 6 AN line. So that's how I plan on doing the fuel system. Now, another thing that we gotta do here soon, we have a brand new used harness. So that was actually out of the 04 XT and we're gonna have to untape the thing and reroute all the plugs and sensors and take out wires that we don't need and all that good stuff. We'll probably make a whole separate video on doing that. But yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at there. The last you guys saw of the fuel system, we were installing the radium dual pump hanger setup in which we got that all done. And now I'll give you guys a little update. I got this fuel filter off Amazon. It has 10 AN ORB fittings that I've adapted down to 8 AN. And the reason behind that was because I just didn't want this thing to restrict the fuel flow at all. And this is a uh, 100 micron filter. But the problem I've been running into is trying to figure out where to mount this thing. And I think I have it figured out, but it's just, going to be a very hard uh, hard piece to install just because of where I have to splice the AN line to make it uh, go on here. But we did get the AN lines on. Get a little flashlight so you guys can see, but as you can see, we have the 8 AN line hooked up with a 90 in there, and we have the 6 AN return hooked up straight, and those are both PTFE hoses that are good with E85 and we have fed them all the way across under here and they're going out underneath the car. I'll go over there and show you guys now. This is the driver's side rear wheel well and you can see that black thing right there is the fuel tank and those are my two lines coming down from up top. I just have them sitting under the car right now but the plan is to mount the fuel filter right there somewhere and hopefully the lines will support it and hold it up because it's all gonna be pretty tight. And then up under here, let's open the door and we'll show you guys where they're gonna come through. Now I have the seat folded, but you can see this is where the stock fuel line comes through anyway. And I've took the grommet out and put some sound deadening just to protect the edges because the edge right here was pretty sharp. But that's where our fuel lines are gonna come through. Then they're gonna go over and just be hidden right behind this carpet. So pull up this carpet for a second you guys can see I'm gonna clean up this area a little bit just because it's kind of old and dirty but they're gonna go right like that right in line with all those and that's where our stock fuel lines were anyway and then they're gonna come all the way to the front let's see 
under all this carpet right here, all the way up under this, and then you guys can see that one hole right there. They're gonna go right through there and be nice and discreet, so that way we don't have to worry about ever seeing them. They'll come out of this hole up under here, which I think you guys can see it from there, but yeah, they'll come right out of there, go right over to the top of the engine, to that Y I was talking about earlier, and then go straight to our fuel rails and blah, 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 to our regulator. We'll show you guys more of that as we get into it, but that's pretty much how the fuel lines are gonna be. Now, I did put a and a up on my Instagram, and I had a couple questions that I wanted to answer real quick. One question was, how long did it take me to find the red car? And I actually fell into the red car, kind of. I wasn't even looking for it, and I found it on Facebook, I think it was, about two years ago. And it's crazy because I didn't really realize what it was until I got it, and now they're so, so hard to find that I realized it was a pretty good buy. But yeah, that's about how long I, I really fell into it. So it was only like maybe searching for a month. It was when I had this car and this car only, and I wanted something to get around in. But now I've realized that the red car is a little bit too rare and nice to use as a daily driver. So that is that. But the next question was, what will I keep stock? And I thought that was pretty funny, but probably nothing, which is good for you guys. You guys always have content of me installing parts and all kinds of good stuff, so I guess that's a good thing. But uh, the final question was, what's your rear brake setup? And it's just the Brembos that came off of a Forester STI that I bought when I did the entire swap. So that's the answer to that. And that was it. That was all the questions we had. But if you guys have more questions, drop them in the description or drop them in the comment section below and uh, we'll get to them in the next video or in future videos. I'm pretty sure that is it for the issues for now. There's probably some stuff I'm forgetting, but if I can remember it in the next video, I'll be sure to include it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys liked the video, make sure you drop a like, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. We're trying to do some stuff that you don't really see on YouTube too much. So that's good. If you guys liked it, be sure to drop a like. Uh, we'll be back with a new video soon, uh, installing more cool parts. So stay tuned.